we've been joined by a third who I think needs no introduction. <laughs> Fantastic, and uh, I'm delighted to see you. Uh, it's a real treat for me to see you in the flesh. Uh, welcome. Not sure about that. But <laughs> <laughs> um, wow, what an adventure! I'm, I'm, I was uh, really pleased to be able to see it with this with this great audience on the big screen. And congratulations to to all three of you. Uh, this these events took place in 2012. Uh, starting to be a while ago, something that you, I guess, had lived and moved on with rather quickly, moving back to the bottom of the floor <laughs> uh, a few weeks later. How did you two come to be telling this story? <laughs> Can you tell me a little bit about that? Well, Richard, you start. So, um, so I met Chris. Uh, I'd heard about the story. I was doing, uh, doing some work up in Aberdeen. and um, So you heard through word of mouth or something? Or everybody was talking about it at the time. So okay. everyone within the industry. I mean, you know, this is an industry that is so far from most of our experiences. Yeah. But within that industry, it was... It was you know, Chris was known as this kind of crazy <laughs> fish man with <laughs> multiple lives. And uh, so I was interested in it, but it wasn't quite the same as um, just hearing it secondhand is when I ended up working with Chris and um, in some divey pub <laughs> one night, um, Chris told me the story firsthand and, and um, it just knocked me over. You know, it was just uh, unbelievable. And Chris then put me in touch with his company, his uh, health and safety director, and they supported making a smaller film uh, about the incident for to show the human side of safety. Okay, so that so that started as an industry. You had the industry film, and then you wanted to you went to, on to make a feature film. Well, Alex, yeah. Well, I think that, that came yeah. about because um, I made a film with Richard years and years and years ago. Um, Alex loves this bit, by the way. Sorry. I, I, I think Richard secretly <laughs> yes, does think, as well. I, I but, think uh, you need <laughs> to point out the role that he was playing in it. Uh, well, uh, I was making a film for BBC Three about people living as pigs with pigs. Now, Richard was one of the pigs, and he was a and he was a tremendous pig, I have to say. Um, can I actually can I just point out that I was living as a pig for the film. I wasn't living as a pig. Yeah, sorry, <laughs> I I came out. That, yes. That's the same thing in my book, it yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't an obduct. <laughs> so, okay, I, I should add that, yes. Uh, sorry. Um, we got on really well, but uh, we sort of lost contact. And then about sort of three, four years later, wasn't it? We were, um, I was walking along um, a pier in the West Country called Cleveton Pier, which you may have heard of, which is a beautiful... Anyway, I'm going on too much about that. Um, beautiful pier, though. Um, uh, and I was there with my kids, taking some photos. It's great for photos. And then I saw Richard and went, oh, my God, it's the pig. How are you? <laughs> uh, so we got chatting, and Richard said, I've just made this film about this accident, uh, incident, accident. Right. Uh, you must see it. It's so good, and the story is amazing. He told me the story, and I just had to see it. So... He, kindly sent me a link and I started watching it and then within I'd say two minutes I decided that will make a fantastic feature doc so from there we started working together and meeting people and finding funding through Stuart and Al and um, and, uh, Met Film and people in Scotland and all these people and there it is. Well, fantastic. And, and, and Chris, what was it like for you for all of this to be dredged up uh, quite a few years on and to, and to have what is a really strange industry to, the, to most of us um, be sort of explained on the big screen and brought to a much wider audience? Yeah, it was um, it, strange. Obviously, it's surreal to see yourself on a, a big screen. I'm sure it is for anybody. But um, in a strange way, as, as sort of mentions there, we went back to work straight away. So we sort of moved past the whole incident fairly quickly probably probably too quickly in retrospect you know uh, but we did that i think for our own sake and because you know that's our career and that's the work that we do so we'd had a little choice but um we perhaps didn't take enough time to reflect on things that happened so in a, in, a, in a strange way it's been a very cathartic sort of process to come back to it and revisit everything and um you know i think every time i watch it now i'm th i'm thinking uh, different things about it and uh, you know maybe um how little we did reflect on things at the time so yeah but but as you say the other the other nice thing about it my, my concern to be honest right at the beginning was that um yeah, whilst it's a sort of an interesting incident if you like that it, it perhaps wasn't enough to sustain a full sort of hour and a half mm -hmm. feature if you like but um what's lovely about it i think is that you you do get that insight into this world that uh, you know i certainly didn't know about it until i got involved and um you know it does have this sort of strange alien side to it i suppose so that's 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 a lovely thing about it i think it, it lets people see 
a little bit more of that, yeah. I, I mean, that's something we were very keen to do from the outset, was about showing this strange... Because, I mean, I had heard nothing about saturation diving before doing this film, and it was so incredibly captivating and fascinating in and, and as of itself. That's correct, yes. Um, so, um, and then uh, the authenticity we wanted to carry throughout the whole film as well about the people in it, all the actors are the real people or uh, people who are their sort of opposites on the ship and the ship was the set for most of the reconstruction as well. As well. So you have this authenticity going throughout it as well. So that was something we we're very keen to have as a thread throughout, basically. Oh, so you answered one of my questions that the actors were the real people with, with some hair... hair um Additions, I think. Uh, well, yes. What one you're you referring to me there? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't make the cut no on that. <laughs> um, yeah, by and large, yeah. I mean, uh, the only one who wasn't the real person of uh, the main characters, well, there was two actually, was uh, Michael, the uh, DPO on the bridge. Okay, yeah. Um, but also Craig wasn't, because he was working. So basically, we, I mean, that's the thing with saturation divers, you get called at work, at, called to work at very sort of unpredictable times basically and filming came about and we had to decide when we're going to actually start to do the filming and Craig unfortunately had to go offshore so okay. we um mm -hmm. so he was the only actor in the whole thing I think actually wasn't he everyone else was real people everyone else board. was from the vessel yeah. yeah I was gonna say it's not necessarily a good thing by the way it's probably the only sort of actor in history who did a pretty poor job of playing himself <laughs> <laughs> right? well yeah I mean uh, uh, the the standout thing from Don't agree the, with that, by the, the way. film. <laughs> 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 no, but just uh, yeah, you know, I'm just always reminded seeing that stuff of of Chris playing himself, not only having a, a near death experience, but then when he was in the bell, um, uh, being himself because of the rules, it would have cost more for him to have gone to be submerged. So we used a dummy to be pulled out of the hole, and and having having been sort of submerged here for a long, long time, Chris was shivering. No, no, I'm all right, and <laughs> and and then, and then we had to ask him to hoist himself up, his dead self, which was just it got weird at that stage. <laughs> I was, uh, I think I've told this story before as well, but uh, the, the, when you talk a weird, there was um, uh, you know. Th uh, I never really had any sort of you know religious revelation. I think I'm similar to Duncan, not religious at all. But um, we had this moment where we're filming. Uh, we did some of the recreations up in a sort of big. Um, it's an old aquarium, essentially, up in in Fort William in the Highlands near where I live. And um, they did this fantastic job of building a set and blackening the whole thing off to try and recreate the the North Sea. Um, and I'm uh, I'm in this in this set, and we're trying to recreate those sort of dying dying moments, aren't we? You know, and it's um, it's quite a hard thing to do, I think, through a through a you know a small gap in a in a helmet, so Richard in his in a brave effort to try and sort of stimulate some kind of acting out of you know somebody like me, <laughs> uh, he came. They sort of dropped a microphone into the water and he started speaking to me in this sort of actorish actorish voice he has, sort of deep. And simultaneously, they sort of shone this beam of light down through the darkness on top of me. So that was as close to, to God as I think I came in the whole thing. It was, uh, yeah, that was... That, that was we crazy. never told you this, Chris, but we already had the shot. It was yeah, that's <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. The cameras weren't even rolling. Yeah. It, was, it, was, it was the voice of Pig, I guess, yeah, yeah. was coming down to you. Any questions? <laughs> I am going to open it up in a minute, but I, I wondered... Um, now, you must have been had some films in mind, perhaps, when you were doing it. Obviously, the ones that that I would have thought was be like Touching the Void and Uni United 93 and I think you know the the combination of the the factual and the reconstructions and I think you've done a really good job there because I was not always sure which was which but can you talk a little bit about your aesthetic approach to it and what were what were the films you were thinking of? Um, well I mean Touching the Void was obviously um, one of our big sort of touch points as it were because uh, of the way the story is constructed but but what we could do with this film which you couldn't do with Touching the Void was that we could hold back Chris. We didn't have to mm -hmm. reveal he survived until the very last moment. Whereas touching the void, you've got to hear the other side of the story, otherwise it doesn't work. Um, and then also sort of um, uh, uh, sort of aesthetically, um, Paul Greengrass is quite a big influence mm -hmm. because the energy- United 93 director. Yeah. yeah, exactly, yeah. So so you just have that sort of energy and the sort of semi-observational feel to it and mm -hmm. makes it feel much more real and immediate to do that. Mm -hmm. And also it's much quicker and cheaper to film that way as well. <laughs> so, um, so it all worked perfectly in that sense. So did you know, I was gonna ask you about the holding back of Chris, because um, w was there a lot of talk into, because I, I felt like it could have come at different times and, and was there a lot of thought that went into when that was gonna be? Yeah, I mean, w I mean we went through the whole uh, cycle of that basically at one point 
we're going to have Chris from the beginning telling us, yeah. because, I mean, there's fascinating insight that Chris could have given us throughout. And then there's another point when we thought, well, maybe sort of halfway through the incident, so you have it all going off and on the um, on the ship and it's all going wrong and they're all going, oh, he's dead, he's dead, he's dead. And then he cut to Chris from the bottom and he's going, well, they all thought I was dead, but I knew different. <laughs> so it could have worked like that, but then that would have taken the tension out of all the stuff going on the surface because then you kind of know that what's happening. So we settled on holding Chris back to the point we did because we wanted to keep everyone in the moment as you, you found everything out at the same time as the people on that night. So it sort of felt like you were with them much more because you were, you just had no, well, I'm sure people worked it out at different points, but um, you had no idea basically what was going on. And the confusion, and we didn't go into the detail of what actually went wrong with the DP, DP system because they didn't know on the night either. They only found that out subsequently. So we were really, really keen to keep it in the moment, basically. So, so the notes now to follow up say, do turn off and on as your first point of action, right? <laughs> well, and they, the, the, the crew on the ship are Norwegian, the, the vast majority of them, and they call that the Swedish solution. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> apparently the Swedish call it the Norwegian solution. Yeah, turning, turning it on and off. Yeah. But the interest, one, 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 one interesting thing about holding Chris back is it's really important to care about about him and that was one of the risks that we thought well if we hold him back you know will they even know who this guy is that is that you know that we're trying to get back and rescue and that's where the the, the archive, the archive yeah, and the with some great archive there from that yeah, same and, same and trip, so yeah. you can get to know it's interesting that as an audience you can get to know somebody without mm -hmm. actually having met him in well certainly in mm -hmm. sort of the same medium as you've met all the other people who are talking about him and also that w what you invest in somebody from hearing people's relationship with them because if somebody dies ultimately it's it's about the relationship that are left behind. Yeah. You know, well, apart from Dave, apparently. Apart yes. from Dave, yeah. <laughs> Dave, the exception to prove the rule, of course, yeah. Ask, <laughs> I was just going to ask about that before I opened it up. <laughs> Did you have any idea that Dave and Duncan would be such good cop, bad cop coming across this? Well, yeah, we, we, we knew, because, I mean, that, that, that was how it's all going to work so beautifully. They all inhabit such an amazingly different space of character. And, I mean, Duncan is such a brilliant father figure. And Dave, I, I think Dave is just tremendous. He's just an amazing character. And he's, he's the person who speaks what we all think but dare not say. <laughs> well, I certainly would have thought that but never dare say it. But, um, <laughs> no, I mean, I, I think Dave was an absolute gift. And yeah, he I got didn't the know him that well, you know. Easy come, easy go. I think that's what he was saying. What was he's your thoughts about he's that, He's a close Chris? friend now, by the way, yeah. yeah. So, yeah he's I hope so. Probably, probably as close a friend as I have on the boat, strangely, yeah. <laughs> Look at you rather fondly in that. In that, uh, it comes around okay. in the end. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Can I have some questions, please? I have other. One. Yes. Yeah. I'm uh, just curious. Oh, I think there's a ro roaming mic. If you hang on just a sec, because oh, they're recording. <coughs> <laughs> no, uh, just want to say I love the film. By the way, it's an amazing, amazing story. Um, but I'm curious because earlier on in the film, uh, there was a decision to um, introduce certain elements of the diving process through um, text rather than. I'm, I'm sure there was explanation of like the way the bell worked and why was the decision made to throw, show that through text rather than through um, you know. Interviews. It's a really yeah. good question, and it is it's difficult. You know, we talked about this a lot, and and we tried really tried to keep it minimal, but there is just certain stuff that you that you you, you need to know. So that I mean, we had a lot of discussion, didn't we, about the? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I think the thing is that, that we all got all of the interviewees to cover that in interview, but the thing is that because it's so technical, you have to know it, and we wanted to control that so it's really crisp and clear without any confusion. So you can just move on and pass it. So like, like the DP mode thing, for example, you could have had a minute of people explaining about ships and moving and all this kind of stuff, but we just wanted to be really crisp and clear. So you, and it, and we also wanted to try and avoid, but it's quite hard to do it. But like, it's like pay attention here. This is important, mm -hmm. and then you move on basically. And it is it's bloody complicated as well. I mean, <laughs> that's the. I mean, really, it's kind of boiled down to the absolute essence there. But if you try to explain it, somebody doesn't know anything about it. You know, you could be there for half an hour. <laughs> It's an interesting question. Why? What, what uh, prompted you to ask it? Oh, no. You're the one. You're the one. There is a prize for the most difficult question, and there's free drinks afterwards as well for those that stay to the end. It, it was just a, like I've watched a lot of documentaries, and it was something that you rarely see, yeah. and that was just the curiosity of it. But thank you. Great. Can I have other questions, please? <coughs> 
I'm wondering if, because this takes, lots of films these days do get made in the edit. It seems to me this one with so much reconstruction and so much shooting had to be rather carefully planned out. Could you talk us through the process and what that was like and what the edit was like in its original composition, I think? Um, well, I mean, the way I look at it always is that we, our starting point was the helmet camera footage and the ROV footage, mm -hmm. basically, and then it's sort of building it up from there. And so the thing is with the ROV and the helmet cam footage, it's only specific to Chris and Dave and Duncan, really. And so the obvious thing really to do was to have that footage playing into the reconstruction the, in the dive control and all around the ship. So it always anchors you, pardon the pun, um, to, the, um, to, what, to the action of what's going on. So it allows you this sort of frictionless moving around all the areas on the ship and the people and the characters. And it allows you to explore the characters as well. Does that, yeah, I think I waffled a bit there, does that make sense? Or? It evolved um, as well, I mean, it started off early on, um, you know, we started much earlier and we went into some backstory and then there was sort of things like budget, you know, you have to overcome the obstacles of things like not having enough money to shoot certain things and so the story gets pushed in a certain direction and you, and you work, work out how you're going to make it work for that, you know, and, and actually, you know, what you end up with is just something that's very, very contained within the ship you know yeah because so. we started off um sam will remember this we did a whole that uh, sam the editor is there there he is waving uh, um uh we started off doing a whole sequence like a 10 15 minute sequence of leaving port in a blizzard and it was beautiful and stunning and all this stuff about connect uh, le losing your connection to the land and breaking that and all that but i mean it was beautiful and it worked really well but it felt a bit too safe and a bit too kind of pedestrian in a sense. You know this, you've seen this all before. So we sort of junked that, which is quite painful to do, <laughs> but we junked that and then we started, I mean, we took Alien as a reference point to this, where you just start in the middle of the sea mm -hmm. and you have to kind of work out what's going on and you get drawn in. It's an intriguing situation to find yourself in. So you get drawn into it and then we drip, give you drip, drip, drip probably another bad pun but um <laughs> as you go on and um so uh, to give you what the situation is how did you find it working as co-directors it was great could we, could we both have very different backgrounds i mean richard is from a acting background and sort of um that kind of situation and being a pig obviously and uh and i come from more shut TV. up about the pig <laughs> and, and, and and i uh, come from a tv background so you both have different skill sets and we came together um, really well, I think, actually, to sort of make and use our strengths to make the film how it came out. And Chris, how, about, how, do, how did uh, Morag take to being pulled into this uh, emotionally again and uh, sort of being a star of the film herself? Yeah, she was uh, so, uh, disappointingly unemotional, I think, at the beginning, yeah. But um, we, uh, <laughs> I, I can remember, I wait, was it this one? Oh, yeah, anyway, there was, a, there, was a, there was a moment when, um, in order to induce emotion, the, the Richard, I remember, particularly remember you showing Morag the, the sort of that raw footage where you come across my sort of twitching, lifeless body, basically, you know, and uh, that, that you sort of pl played that to us, shut the camera, <laughs> shut it down and got the camera rolling, you know, right, uh, you know. <laughs> so, but yeah, no, it's in, in, in seriousness, yeah, it's, um, it's, I think it's, you get a sense in the film that, um, that th what happened was more, in many ways, more emotional and more difficult for people who had to witness it than it was for us in a way. Yeah. We had the sort of euphoria of getting through things, but as with many emotional situations, it's, 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 um, it's the people you love and it's the people you know and the people who witness things that suffer more than you do. So, yeah, I'm sure it, it has been difficult. And, you know, I mean, she, she was, um, she was here, we watched it she last night together. She's not here tonight, no, All but right. she, she was here, she was watching, we were watching it last night in Glasgow together right. and it's, yeah, it's difficult. We're both sort of uh, welling up a bit really still. So it's, um, yeah. Of course, by the time she found out about it, you were okay in a way. So mm. she wasn't actually pulled through into the same well, extent she, as well, you well, yes, she, right. I mean, she was very affected by that, even even though you were okay, wasn't she? Yeah, yeah. It was a it was a strange one, really, because um, I, I mean, when it when we sort of oh, you know, everything calmed down, we still had four or five days of decompression before we could uh -huh. um, sort of actually physically touch each other, if you like. So in my naivety, I decided this this wasn't a big deal. I didn't really, and it's probably best if I didn't tell her. Uh, no, what's what's the point in worrying her? You know, um, so. Particularly, as it's very hard to communicate with people in there when you phone home with that ridiculous voice. It's 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 quite it's quite hard to get anything serious across, you know. Um, even if you are intelligible, yeah. So I decided not to tell her, and uh, I, I remember a couple of days after it happened, I tried to ring home maybe to start spilling the beans, and uh, uh, she had a friend visiting, and she answered the phone, and 
you know, once, twice, three times hung up on me because she thought I was a crank, a crank caller of some kind, you know. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, eventually I ended up telling her, telling her the story rather than, um, uh, without revealing that it was me who was involved, you know, and I think by, yeah. the, by the end she sort of guessed, yeah, so, uh, yeah, but it was strange. But so she, you know, I've, I, was, I was thinking, you know, it wasn't such a big deal, I'll be fine, I'll see you in a few days, I'll be fine, you know, and because that wasn't good enough and she, she felt a sort of desperate need to get in a, get in the car and drive to Aberdeen and be at the gangplank when I came out, which she was, which was, which was lovely. Mm. Yes, question. It was so amazing. I think my mother and I cried throughout <laughs> the whole thing, and I'm sorry for everyone that had to hear us. Uh, <laughs> I was just wondering what the recovery was like on the boat afterwards. Can recovery. you remember it? My, my personal recovery, yes, you mean? Or yeah. Yeah, it was. Um, it was. It was fast, really. That was. Oh, I mean, really? one of the, not the. You know, the 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 fact that I sort of survived it was remarkable in itself. But I think, in many ways, more remarkable is the fact that I survived undamaged. And I say undamaged in that nobody's really had the courage to tell <laughs> tell me otherwise. You know, but uh, <laughs> it's. Um, yeah. So. Um, yeah. It was. Uh, it was strange. It was. It, it, I, I, physically, I felt fine very quickly. I've, I was, as if you really want to know the details, I was quite. I vomited quite a few times. I think just shock and things like that. Uh, I was cold. I wanted to sleep. I think all the symptoms of, of shock essentially. Mm. But um, yeah, after that sort of initial initial period, I, I physically got over it very very quickly, and I was up and about. And as, as I was sort of referencing there, it was it, my concern wasn't was more practical things. You know, you don't really. I don't think I really appreciate the gravity of what happened. Even maybe even till now, really. Um, my concern was, oh, when, are we, when am I coming back to work? And you know, I've blown my chance of the next trip here, you know. And, you know, not realising that actually we were going to be shut down for three weeks. And, you know, uh, Are you still you know. diving? Yeah, yes. Um, I'm, I mean, that's nearly seven years ago now and still dive. But we're, and with the same people on the same boat. So I'm quite still quite regular with Dave and Duncan. Yeah, so, yeah. Perfect. Thank you. We have another question down here. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, this is a question for uh, Chris um, specifically. Um, for me, the, the most the strongest moment was the moment with the medic, where um, the whole discussion with "it's okay," and I was just wondering um, what prompted you to say that in that moment, and why. Yeah, just no, I'm just laughing because we were talking about this last night. Yeah. Um, uh, now I have absolutely no recollection of that at all. <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> so I can't, I, <laughs> I can't really. I can't. No, which is not to say it didn't happen. But I remember that. Well, it's funny is because when we um, that so that is a recreation. The, the sort of piece we see as you leaning over me. Uh, the tea cozy is entirely true. By the way, that did happen. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I can remember we decided we we're going to recreate this scene, and I was oh, okay. Right, I don't know what this is, but yeah. And uh, Stu was very emotional. Though I'd not seen the interview footage. I, I hadn't realised to what degree it affected us. I was a bit blasé about it, you know, and uh, we went and did it. And I, I, I've subsequently, having seen him be interviewed about it, and, um, uh, you know, I feel feel guilty that I sort of, I didn't mock it quite, but <laughs> I, was, uh, I didn't give it the gravity as it deserved because he was obviously, it was obviously something that meant a lot to him at the time, yeah. It's uh, fascinating, though, that people do have you know, you really do see the different perceptions because I was just noticing then, you know, Stu saying, oh, you were saying to me I was a bit cold and then you've got you saying, I don't remember being cold, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Well, obviously, you were freezing, but, um, yeah, yeah. you know, but at the time, so obviously you must have remembered that at some point in order to have said it to him. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. I mean, and um, that's something uh, that's touched on the film again, isn't it, that... Um it, it was it's three degrees on the bottom, you know, it had been cold extremely quickly, hypothermic very, very, very quickly indeed. We, we sort of, the hot water is attached to the side of your suit and uh, the problem is normally being too hot, so sometimes we'll dump a bit of it to, to, to sort of get rid of it or get knocked and turned off accidentally and you get cold in, you know, seconds, it's bitterly, bitterly cold. So, uh, you know, I sort of say slightly in the film that uh, my memories, I think I have this very lucid memory of everything that happened that night and, you know, from start to finish almost, but the fact that I don't remember being, you know, Baltically cold, uh, you know, would suggest otherwise. So that's another example, you know, that's another thing, isn't it? You know, uh, and I'm saying I don't remember Stu saying that, but, you know, um, that pre again, perhaps suggests that I wasn't, I didn't quite have all my faculties, um, you know, quite as, as much as I thought I did, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm curious, how much of, because um, I'm realizing you said that that was a reenactment, how much of the CCTV then is We can't tell you that. Hang on a second. The question is that. This will be the last one of these I'm doing, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. I 
would be remiss if I didn't ask them, but now you've got me curious. Um, I think we can say, well, all, all the footage of the incident is real, all of it. Um, but the thing is that all the stuff in SAT, they don't record that. Mm. So that was all recreation. And that was also um, recreation or real you and... Yeah, we, we, let, we, we, we left we, a recorder going yeah, for three weeks or something. Yeah, we got, we got very lucky that they all went on rotation on one on one dive so we could actually get all of it for real as though they were there basically because it's personal sorry chris because it's personal space that's why they didn't record it whereas they have to record the dives but we uh, but obviously once chris's uh hat camera was disconnected then then there's a gap and um and so we you know so we, so the underwater reconstruction we had to do was to to fill that gap but it's that that gap it replicates exactly the gap that we have in our actual knowledge of what happens as part of we um very generously got a bit of money from um welcome the welcome trust and, and as part of that we we um consulted scientists as and um, one of the one of the people that we consulted was a, a neuro neuros, uh, neuroscientist at um cambridge and it, and he did this kind of graph of what we know, what are the hard facts, and what don't we know, you know, and, and it was fascinating that whole thing of memory and what memory does. Just following on from your point, Chris, and you know that you know it could have all happened in a split second in your head. We don't know. We well, can only go on the best record we have, which is Chris's memory for those gaps. I mean, the really interesting thing is that he, um, the guy, uh, Doctor Tristan Beckenstein in Cambridge, he said basically it's quite possible that none of it happened and you could have completely invented the whole thing we know that it broke <laughs> and you know that you didn't have a 30 as, as, as 30 six the, minutes whatever later you know so, yeah. so, so we know those two facts so um, basically all of us it, it could have it, the umbilical could have broken and he could have been on the top of a structure and until the, the rov bottom, got to him yeah could yeah. have never have happened so it's unlikely but it's possible <laughs> it, it's possible yeah okay um we're done yeah okay getting the the final wrap-up so um we can we can there we can yes i believe the there are yeah. drinks to be had yes i don't know if i'm supposed to invite the whole cinema yeah. but okay yes. <laughs> 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 that's a yes is it there, yeah. okay good there's there's True. one <laughs> bottle of prosecco you just help yourselves <laughs> <laughs> the first row will get that. Okay, so thanks to the audience, and thank you so much to all of thank you. Thank you. Thank you.